We do not promote the use of legal or illegal psychoactive substances. This video has been created strictly for harm reduction purposes. Since 2010, the number of misreported deaths caused by an LSD overdose have risen from zero to a small handful. Now, most of these cases can be easily disproved, while other cases have actually blamed the true culprit, which is imposter LSD, except for the most recent case, which is also the most mysterious. In May of 2017, at the Lightning in a Bottle Music Festival, a 20-year-old woman by the name of Bailey Gatlin was claimed to have been killed by LSD toxicity. However, experts who have studied LSD are calling bullshit. They not only say that it defies logic, but her symptoms that she experienced right before dying don't really fit the bill of a potential LSD death. She experienced symptoms of hyperthermia, which is more often seen with drugs such as MDMA. But what's even more likely is that her negative effects, which led to her death, were caused by imposter LSD, more accurately called an NBOME compound. Dr. David E. Nichols, a pharmacologist and medical chemist who is considered an expert on hallucinogenic substances, has stated that the low levels of LSD found in her blood could not have killed her and those involved in the investigation, must have failed to identify substances that were likely to have caused her death. The autopsy in question was performed by Dr. Gary Walter, a medical examiner who is currently facing disciplinary charges for driving to work drunk last year. Dr. Nichols also said, it's just not logical or reasonable to conclude that she is the first of 30 million people who have safely taken LSD to have died it's not possible. There is something else. And to also quote Dr. Charles Grob, physiologically, LSD is not toxic. Psychologically, it can be very risky. Deaths have occurred when individuals under the influence of LSD die of suicide or an accident. And Dr. Nichols also said, recreational doses of LSD are way below any kind of dose that would kill you. An active dose of LSD can be as low as 50 micrograms. This is such a visually small amount that you'd have trouble seeing it without a microscope. At doses this low, an individual could safely consume over 100 tabs without coming close to overdose. Dance Safe, a drug checking company that was present at the event, who also held a drug checking booth, they stated that both MDMA and NBOME compounds were present during the festival. And realistically, she could have died from either of those substances, or maybe even a combination. It's not unusual for people to consume both tabs of LSD and NBOME in the same night unknowingly. And not to mention, it's equally as common for the same individuals to mix MDMA with it. They would call this a candy flip. And according to Gatlin's friends, she was said to have accidentally consumed a second tab of, bunny years again, LSD after the first dose, which in my opinion could very well have been an NBOME substance. NBOME, which refers to a whole class of compounds, the most common being 25i NBOME, is a psychedelic phenethylamine which is commonly sold on small tabs on gummies, or even on sugar cubes. It's basically sold all the same ways that LSD is sold. This is because dealers like to sell it, labeled as LSD, in a way to trick their customers into buying it. It does have somewhat similar psychedelic effects, which I'll get into later. However, it can be extremely dangerous, even in small doses. We currently have dozens of reported deaths attached to NBOME toxicity, and we have zero undisputed deaths attached to LSD toxicity. Unfortunately though, in regards to Bailey Gatlin, we will probably never know exactly what did kill her. The county refuses to do any more testing, even though experts are saying that they really should. It would appear that they'd rather stick with their initial claim than to admit that they may be wrong. What it actually is, is a very potent derivative of 2CI. It can more accurately be called 2CI NBOME. Many users would describe 25I NBOME as being a very visually dominant experience. They describe it as having a lot of colorful, circus-like swirling visuals, and also being accompanied by a lot of physical stimulation. Now compared to LSD, 25I doesn't usually have that same kind of introspective depth. 
it's also less likely to cause the same type of mystical experiences. The common dose range is anywhere from 500 to 1200 micrograms compared to LSD, which is commonly sold in the 50 to 100 microgram range. One of the greatest reasons why NBOMEs are so dangerous is because of their unpredictable dose range. We've had reports of users dying from as low as two tabs, and then there's other anecdotal reports of people taking four or five tabs and being completely fine. And currently we have absolutely no idea why individual sensitivity can vary so dramatically. Many deaths came after periods of terrifying hallucinations and violent psychosis. Those overdosing have often screamed in absolute terror, been found with blue vomit-filled lips, experienced hyperthermia, or what's also common are seizures which leave the user brain dead. What's also common is people checking themselves into the ER just for experiencing uh, negative side effects from their dose. For example, the vasoconstriction can be so intense that your hands and feet can turn blue. Now you might be asking yourself, why the F would dealers sell this junk disguised as LSD? I mean, why don't they just sell real acid? Or moreover, why don't they actually sell this and label it for what it is? As with most unfortunate circumstances in life, all you really have to do is follow the money. And Biome compounds can be obtained for remarkably cheap prices. Even today, when purchased in bulk, one tab of NBOME can run a dealer as cheap as 5 to 50 cents compared to LSD, which is often far more expensive. There's also the very real fact that not all dealers are bad, and not all of them are even aware that they're selling NBOME and not LSD. In fact, the very first time that I personally tried LSD, the guy who sold it to me told me that I should expect my tongue to go numb. Funny thing is, my tongue never did go numb, which left me thinking that he sold me bunk tabs. I was pretty pissed off. The irony is just hilarious. Suffice to say that once my vision began changing, I was quite surprised. Anyway, I'm sure that even after I've done my best to instill a lot of fear into you guys, there's still going to be a lot of people who are going to be curious about trying LSD. And you're going to want to know how you can make sure that your tabs are real acid and not NBOME without having to risk putting them in your mouth and tasting them. Most of you guys already know what I'm going to say next, but for those of you who don't, what you need is a... reagent test. More specifically, what you're going to need are both the Ehrlich and the Marquise reagent. Now, the reason that you need both of these is because if you just test the tab with the Ehrlich reagent alone, which will cause it to turn uh, purple, it's not going to tell you if, say, there's something else on there as well. So what you do next is test it with the Marquise reagent, and if your tabs do include an NBOME compound, what's going to happen is they'll turn a dark brown uh, to black with yellow borders. However, if you do test your tab with the Marquise reagent and it shows no reaction, meaning it doesn't change color, then you can be pretty confident that what you have is in fact LSD, or at least you know that it's an indol alkaloid. In order to dispel a lot of the confusion, because I surprisingly get asked this question a lot, you can't take the tab after you test it. Like, you can't put a drop of this on there and then eat it after. This shit is corrosive and poisonous. So what you're going to do is cut a very small piece off the corner of your tab, and then you'll cut that little tiny piece into two halves, and then you test each of those little pieces with each of these reagents. Assuming that the Marquise displays no reaction and the Ehrlich reagent shows a purple, then you can be quite confident that what you have is either LSD, or what it could also be, which is quite rare, is one of LSD's sister drugs, such as Ethlad, Allad, or even 1P-LSD. All you really want to do is make sure that the tabs aren't NBOMEs. There aren't too many other drugs that are active at such a small dose where you have to really worry. Now don't get me wrong, there are some. In order to be 100% safe, you do have to send your tabs away for actual laboratory testing, but a lot of people aren't going to do this, and this is really the next best thing. The company that I'm featuring is the same one which donated these kits to me, and they are also pledging a very small portion of every sale made through that link to my channel. Meaning you guys get to be safe, and you get to help support my channel at the same time. And also, I forgot to mention this when I initially filmed this video, but this same company is currently offering a discount 
just for the viewers of Psych Substance. If you follow the link in the video description to buy your test kit and you type in on your checkout, um, I think it's gain five, I'll write what it is over here, then you'll get a $5 discount on your order. Now they've said that this discount will only be made available until the end of October. That is unless enough people buy test kits. So if enough people, you know, follow the link and type in gain five, then maybe this discount will remain for my viewers longer. Anyway, that concludes today's video. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure you leave it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this or get an overview of some of my future projects, you can check out our Patreon page. Any help we can get is greatly appreciated. The growth of this channel is in all of your hands, and it's thanks to your help that we've even made it this far. What I also haven't mentioned are all the anecdotal reports which we have seen where users have said that after just one use, of 25i NBOME, they were left with HPPD. That stands for Hallucination Persisting Perception Disorder. It would appear that users are more prone to getting HPPD after 25i NBOME than after any other psychedelic. Anyway, that concludes this video. Don't forget to always test your substances, test kit link in the video description, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Take care, guys.